President Trump will announce his choice for Supreme Court justice. His pick will replace Justice Anthony Kennedy, who is retiring. And over the weekend, President Trump talked about his decision. Carol Evans, Kaya Edwards is here with everything you need to know. Well, we are getting down to the wire. President Trump is expected to make the call at 8 our time tonight. But just yesterday, he insisted he still hadn't locked down his decision, though he said he's very close. President Trump is setting the stage for Monday night. That's when he'll name his nominee for the Supreme Court. Let's say it's the four people, but and they're excellent. The top four are federal appeals court judges. Brett Kavanaugh, Thomas Hardiman, Amy Coney Barrett, Raymond Kethledge. This person will do a great job, but I'm, I'm very close to making a decision. Have not made it official yet, obviously. Have not made it final, but we're very close to making a decision. It's a move that could tilt the balance of the court to the right, possibly for decades. Democrats fear all four contenders would try to overturn Roe versus Wade, giving women the right to abortion. But some conservatives dismiss that. We only have a single individual on the court who has expressly said he would overturn Roe. So I think it's a bit of a scare tactic. Still no promises about Roe from GOP leaders. Precedent's important, but precedent's not the only thing. We have had bad precedents that were reversed after decades. That's not Confirmation could take more time for some nominees than others. Democrats say a vote on the nominee should be delayed until after the midterm elections. But President Trump wants his nominee confirmed before the Supreme Court begins its next term in early October. Kaya, thank you. And NBC News will have special primetime coverage of President Trump's announcement beginning tonight at 8 o'clock Central Time. NBC Nightly News anchor Lester Holt leads that special report live. Chris? Now to your news headlines. The Minnesota grandmother charged with killing a Florida woman is due again in court this week after prosecutors announced they'll pursue the death penalty. Prosecutors released thousands of pages of documents and photos from the case that show Lois Reese's movements before and after Pamela Hutchinson died. Reese has not been charged with the death of her husband in Dodge County, Minnesota. Nearly a dozen dogs from Mississippi died in a van as they were headed to Animal Humane Society here in Golden Valley. The Southern Pines Animal Shelter said Said the van broke down on Friday, and when the drivers went to move the dogs to safety, they found 11 dogs dead. So really it was just a tragic accident. Shelter officials say they're investigating what went wrong because the van's AC and ventilating systems were working fine. The death toll from unprecedented rains in Japan now sits at over 100. Rivers burst their banks on Sunday and forced several million people from their homes. Rain is set to hit some of the areas for at least another day. Elon Musk's SpaceX rocket company is testing a kid-sized submarine that could be sent to help the boys trapped in a flooded Thailand cave. Musk tweeted videos of the aluminum sub being tested at a pool Sunday. Authorities say rescuing all of the boys could take up to four days. 6.05, time now for your digital dive. We do have some breaking news this morning out of Thailand. A fifth boy has now been rescued from the flooded caves there. Again, a whole soccer team has been trapped there for more than two weeks. But that is the good news coming in early this morning. But the rescue operations have been going. They've been long and intense, as I just mentioned, for weeks. Four boys were rescued Sunday. But it could take even more days to rescue the rest of the, the soccer team and their coach that's stuck inside. And here's why it's so difficult. Check this out. Uh, they, they don't have much breathable air inside of that cave. So, of course, the divers they need to have plenty of oxygen when they go inside. And take a look at this. The most difficult part of this entire journey they're going through, it's right here. And that is where they have a 15-inch wide passage that the boys have to go through all alone. Again, they are tethered to two divers, one boy uh, to two separate divers. So, again, it is a complex process. Many countries, though, involved in the rescue. President Donald Trump tweeting the U.S. working very closely with the government of Thailand to help get all the children out of the cave and to safety. So, what about the boys, the now five boys that have been rescued? Well, they've been sent to a hospital about 30 miles away where they're going to be in sterilized isolation for about two days with absolutely no physical contact. The good news, they're still trying to rescue more, so there might be a sixth boy coming out soon. Again, we heard that they were doing this in pairs of two boys and took about eight hours a for the time. first rescue on Sunday, so it takes quite the process. It is, as you saw, that little map, a long journey. It is crazy. If I'm hiking and I come 
come across a 15 inch diameter hole, I'm not going through. I mean, I probably can't fit through with my girth anyway, but I mean, that's yeah. crazy anyway. So they have uh, seven boys left and a coat, so eight mm. in total. So we're going to have to wait, watch it out, and the Today Show is going to have the latest live from Thailand coming up after our show. Yeah, we hope they all get out safely. Yeah. Right now, Sven, what's one thing weather? Well, we're going to see sunshine today, another warm one. We did have a few showers earlier, but clouds are moving out and humidity will be dropping through the day. We've got just a couple sprinkles left over in the southeast metro and showers south of mainly Mankato this morning. Back up to 89 today. A little break from the humidity late today into tomorrow, but a warm week ahead. Spend thank you. In other news this morning, another day, another controversy over a police call. This time, an apartment manager called police because an African-American man was wearing socks at the pool. Now, this video here recorded by that man's girlfriend, and the video does show the manager asking the man to take his socks off before calling the cops. Well, that video went viral. The manager has since been fired. A new bank rate study shows four in 10 Americans have what they call a side hustle. Now, most of the second jobs are in landscaping, home repair, online sales, or childcare. Surprisingly, not too many for Uber and Lyft drivers. So why are we working so hard? Well, according to the survey, about 40% of people say their first job doesn't pay enough to cover their basic expenses. Other people, they just want some disposable cash. And once again, a couple thousand thrill seekers and a dozen bulls race through the streets of Pamplona, Spain. You can see it there. It was the running of the bulls. Multiple people were injured. At least one of them was gored, others trampled. Every year, I wonder, how is this still a thing? It's an ancient tradition, ending with the bulls being prodded and herded into the arena and killed. Something animal rights groups say is basically torture. Most Spaniards actually disapprove of the event, but the tourists love it. And they keep doing it, even though every year a few of them are gored. Yeah, guys, I I don't know. It seems just terribly mean. I'm kind uh, of on team bull with this one. Yeah, I mean, it's always amusing every year. Uh, you know, like you say, if people want to run on this, I mean, they're doing it in their own volition. So mm -hmm. they get gored. I've had two friends do it. Really? Two of them got gored, but okay. it does make for a really cool Facebook profile picture. Oh, yeah. You're like so doing a selfie, that. and they're behind and you. And that's what it's all about these that's days. That's what it's, no, it's not. I mean, it's that's not what all it's about. It's all about. It's it is, but uh, too mean to the bulls for me. So uh, guess what, you guys? We're going to switch gears here because we're talking about the State Fair. Oh, yay. It's a little over a month away, which is really hard to believe because that means summer's winding down, unfortunately. But hey, we're going to be broadcasting live at the Care Barn as we do every year. And one of our most popular attractions, it's returning. It's the Penny Press. And this year, we want you to help us choose one of our four designs. Just head to carelove.com slash vote now to pick the theme for this year's Fan Penny. We have Cabin Life local eats, Minnesota wildlife, or one of our many landmarks. Mm. And last year we had the Super Bowl theme because mm -hmm. we right. were hosting, Makes so sense. that was a lot of fun. But yeah, vote, let us know what you think, and looks like uh, landmarks taking the cake right now. That's close. Neck and neck wildlife. with Minnesota Live Wildlife yeah, there. Lo local eats will probably not be on the penny press. That's nope. what I'm guessing right now. Unless but a lot of you start voting right <laughs> yeah. now. That's right. Price is right though, a penny, I'm saving up. It's going to be a lot of fun.